Good evening, I'm DK Ross. Now, welcome back to the TTT News. When Chief Labor Relations Officer Sabina Gomez last visited us, we started the conversation about the work of the Conciliation, Advisory and Advocacy Division. We were not able to address workers' or employers' rights, so Ms. Gomez was gracious enough to agree to return. It is time to go in-depth on the Conciliation, Advisory and Advocacy Division. Welcome back, Ms. Gomez. Thank you so much for making the time once more. Thank you so much for having me back. All right, so we want to start off quickly because last time we weren't able to get into it. Okay. Looking at workers' issues, inclusive of migrant workers, how are they treated at the division? All right, well, we have our informal process and our formal process. With the informal process, we have what we call walk-in clients, where anyone can walk in off the street, they have an issue and what we do, we advise both employers and workers. Um, and in case of workers, um, we advise non-unionized um, workers. Um, because workers who are unionized, we would refer them to their um, recognized majority union so they can seek the proper advice. Um, so workers coming off the street, they may tell us they have an issue and um, we hear their issue, we take detail information about the issue then we would ask them, how would you like us to treat with the issue? Um, if they say, well, look, we don't want, we just came for advice, we would give you advice, but we always give advice with the proviso that we are giving you advice based on the information that you would have um, imparted to us, which may not necessarily be the whole story. So in, in cases like that, um, if, the employ if the worker gives us the inf proper information, what we would do, we would ask, have you taken up this issue with your employer because sometimes workers come to us and they haven't um, approached their employer to say, well, look, I have an issue in terms of they have not grieved that they have an issue and they come to a third party. So in instances like that, we would say, look, go back to your employer, um, write them. If you cannot articulate what your issues are, then write, get somebody to help you write in your own words and tell them what it is the issue that you are having and ask them if they could address it. So we give them a time to do that, and if they wish, if it has not been successful, then they could return to us and say, look, I've tried with my employer, and I would like you. They have to give us permission first before we contact the employer. Then we contact the employer to let them know that the worker came in seeking advice, and these are the issues, and we ask to hear the employer's side, and that's where the process starts of um, us trying to to mediate, to find out if we could get a solution um, to the issue. Because most of the times we, we really want to get whatever the conflict is between the both parties sorted out so the worker can go back to work if that is his wish. If it's the wish of both parties that they wish to separate, well then we, we, we assist them in separating in an amicable manner. So I really appreciate the fact that you, you, you speak about not having the worker jump lines of communication. Because sometimes I can see it's almost as though you went and tell mommy yeah. before you even try to <laughs> be, be, before you try to smooth the waters with me, and I don't even know that there's a problem. That's but true. You're going, you're going to complain to a third party that there's this issue that is uh, irreconcilable, apparently. But one of the things, though, when last we spoke, you spoke about a statute of limitations. I'd like you to remind us of that. Also, I want to know: Are there any provisions or are there any limitations? To workers that you are able to help because some people may not have certain documents some people may not have a certain thing or other resources that and because of that I'm wondering whether or not you're saying well we're not able to help you because no. you don't have this so those two questions that statute of limitations and are there any limitations to helping workers all right well um, I, I want to get back to the formal aspect but I will ask I will answer your question in terms of statute of limitation so one of the things that the, when the worker comes to us, we advise the worker, okay, how long did this issue happen? Because you want to find out whether, whether it's, it's um, how far are they from the, the, the matter being statute barred? Because that is important. Um, the statute of limitation is six months. Um, so we advise them in terms of if, if it's a matter where they were already dismissed from the job, we advise them a well, look, um, you're four months in already, it will take you two months to become a member in good standing, so you need to 
you know, go to a union of your choice. And, and, and I'm jumping a little bit because that is one of the rights of the worker. A worker in Trinidad and Tobago is free to join or not join any trade union of their choice. Right? That is a, a right enshrined uh, back to the Constitution in terms of freedom of association. So we advise them. Um, so they get proper advice in terms of statute of limitation because sometimes workers may go to an attorney um, first before they come to us. And the attorney may not be aware of the statute of limitation. And the attorney starts to write letters and time is going. And they have a discussion, and then at some point in time, the discussion fall through, and the matter is not resolved. And by the time the worker looked to come to us, it's because the time frame would have already passed, the matter is statute barred. So sometimes we advise that's why it's important to know statute of limitations. You know, how much time do I have if I have a, a dispute that I can, if I have a grievance that I can properly raise the issue. Mm -hmm. Also, so so in terms that's that's one right, thing. Right. But the form the formal uh, application or rights of workers being able to help workers are there any limitations that no. the division has? No. Um, you ask in terms of workers if they don't have papers or no. Once you are worker in Trinidad and someone employs you, you are a worker and you are entitled to all the rights. Whether and you know we had a little thing about migrant workers. Um, migrant workers do have rights. Um, because they are workers, an employer would have accepted them. So therefore, you know what is required. What what is required in the workplace um, is equality across the board for any worker in Trinidad and Tobago. And if they are workers, whether what, regardless of their status, regardless of their status, they have the same rights and and responsibilities as any national. And you you said the you spoke about the right of association. What are freedom, some of the other of rights, or freedom of association rather? What are some of the other rights that workers in Trinidad and Tobago would enjoy? Well, you have a right to uh, um, a, a, a fair day's pay for a fair day's work, right? And this is a problem that we've been having a lot in terms of workers. They are working faithfully for their employers, and at the end of the month, or however, if they're paid fortnightly, no money is forthcoming, and this, you know, some workers come in to us, it's been going on for months, so they are going to work faithfully um, and, not, get, and not, be, not getting paid. You know, sometimes the complaint is, look, you know, sometimes I have landlords who call, you know, to verify that the worker did come in to us, did have an issue, and we are talking to the employers, you know, what can you do to pay these workers? Because people, sometimes they don't want to, they don't want to take up the matter formally to go to court, you know, they just want the employers to do the right thing, you know, if you, if you uh, have work and you're providing work for me, then you have to, you have to ensure that the workers are being paid, right, if, if there's an issue, you know, say if you, um, if you can't manage your business properly, well then, you know, there's the other step that you ought to take, if you can't manage your business, then, you know, um, you know, you need to get out of business because you can't have workers coming into you working faithfully and at the end of the day there's nothing forthcoming for them and then when the business closes, that's it. The worker has nothing to get. So all of these are consideration. You know, it's a balance. You have to look at it from both sides. Um, you have to look at the, the workers, you know, in terms of what are their responsibility to the employer and one of it is to be present, you know, to be punctual and to be on time. And, um, you know, <laughs> a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. You know, um, sometimes you have workers who come, they clock in, they may not work for the entire day, and they get paid. So all of these things, it's a balance. So you have to look at it from, from, um, from both sides. And you in terms know. of speaking of, of, of looking at it from both sides and balancing, we want to speak about the rights of the employer, but we do that when we return from this break. Stay with us. Welcome back to In Depth with me, DK Roster. We are speaking with Sabina Gomez about workers' rights, employers' rights, the work of the Conciliation, Advisory and Advocacy Division. Now, we spent a little time on workers' rights. Now, I want us to be able to go into maternity, retrenchment, and a few other things. But saying employers' rights, do employers have rights? What are they if they do? They, there's something called management prerogative. They have the right to manage their business as they fit. see fit. They have the right to hire, fire, promote, 
Um, they have the right to discipline their workers. Um, they have the right to provide, um, uh, or I should say, the, the responsibility of providing a safe working environment and, um, you know, free from um, physical or psychological um, harm of the worker. Um, those are some of the, the, the responsibilities of the, of the employer. Um, they have the right to introduce policy. They have the right um, to, to, to restructure the organization. Right, and, and with restructuring, you know, that re the word restructuring, when you use that word, you're talking about retrenchment, severance, you're talking about um, surplus labor. So I'm, I'm tying it all in together, right? Um, so you have, you know, the, 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 the management, they have certain rights which, you know, to see separations, to, to, to sell the business, to form joint partnership, all those are within established standards um, within the management prerogative. So I like the fact that you speak about rights, you also speak about responsibilities. And uh, looking at how some of those things tie in, there's something that I am not sure whether or not I have this correct, but maternity issues. Uh, is there a rebate that is possible with regard to maternity leave and paying someone that is on maternity leave? Well, in order to qualify for maternity maternity leave you have to have like you must the criteria complete 12 months of continuous service you must complete the, the that criteria and the employer is obligated to pay maternity leave right um one of the things that i want to make mention specifically for employers you know when a worker is on um, maternity leave section 11 of the maternity protection act um, employers, whatever they pay to the worker, to the woman, um, it is recoverable um, through taxes. So when they file their taxes, they can claim 100%. So therefore, it's a win-win for the employer, right, in terms of um, him being able not to suffer a loss in terms of somebody's going on maternity leave. So that, should, that, should, that in itself should be an incentive so that the um, employers will obey the law and that's also one of the responsibilities of the of the employer that they obey the laws of the land especially when it comes to business and when it comes to the workers issues and workers rights you talk that talk you make me want to start to ask about paternity <laughs> leave too you know because sometimes well, i felt kind of it's almost as though people were saying well you worthless you know no. daddy worthless you'll get five days no, and done. we are getting there we are getting there because when you look at um and you would find um, paternity leave in most collective agreements. That is where the employer and management sit together and they bargain and they negotiate. But I think we are, we are slowly and surely getting to that point where we, the father's role is important, equally as important as the mother's role. Um, so we are, we are slowly and surely getting there. Hopefully um, it may be introduced in legislation. But you know, sometimes you know, I always, I'm always of the view that not everything government um, could negotiate, should negotiate, should, um, you know, legislate that sometimes society evolve. I mean, you know, we're not, we're now doing um, job w working from home, rotation. I mean, those are the things if you tell an employer, you know, that this will practically be, um, you know, a new normal, you know, people would say no, you know, um, they would like to see you physically at work eight to four. But now, you know, we have, we have evolved circumstances have made us um, think differently, see work differently, and I don't think that is something that we could go back on because I think it's very progressive, and we move away from um, we move away from just seeing the, the person coming there and we look into what's deliverables. What can you deliver? How can you deliver? How can you, you know? So it's uh, we're looking at work-life balance. There are a lot of things that go into it, and as we progress as a nation. You know, things will evolve, and I, I you know, and I, I think these are very progressive times for us. And speaking about those pro progressive times, I'm very glad that you raised the issue of the letter of the law versus the spirit of the law. You spoke about that 12 months having an employee uh, being part of an organization for 12 months before being eligible for maternity leave. Is there somewhere where the spirit of the law can come into play? This is someone that the employer really appreciates their work ethic, how this person is operating in their position, and says, okay, well, we can pay you your maternity leave, even though, that you ha even though you haven't been here for 12 months. Is that something that is possible? 
I think that is possible, and that is why Section 11 is so important, because you may work 11 months and 11 months and five days, and therefore you say, well, okay, you don't qualify, but the employer of his own initiative, he can pay that worker the mater mater um, her maternity benefit, her maternity leave, and also claim it back in taxes. So you can claim it back with your taxes. So the employer would suffer no loss. The woman wins, he wins. It's a win-win for everyone. And I think that is why this, the maternity piece of the Maternity Protection Act is one of the best forms of social protection that we have in that with this piece of legislation, the individual woman, if she feels aggrieved, if there's any um, discrepancy with respect to any violation of the Maternity Protection Act, she as the individual can come forward and report a dispute. And I think that is very progressive. There are only two pieces of legislation that the individual worker can do that, and that's the Retrenchment and Severance Benefit Act and the Maternity Protection Act. So those are two very progressive um, pieces of legislation. So what it does, it gives the woman um, um, different access to justice in terms of she can come as an individual, she can go to a trade union uh, of a choice and join and have the trade union bring the matter forward. But I think it's, it's empowering when you can come and report a matter for yourself, you know? And in terms of the re reporting or actually engaging the services of the division, we have about a minute and a half left. How can persons access advice from the officers of the Conciliation, Advisory and Advocacy Division? All right, you can email us at conciliation.mol at gov.tt. Um, I, I think it's advisable that you email us with a telephone contact. Tell us what your issues are and you will get a phone call. Um, if you want, if there's a sexual harassment issue and you wish to get advice, you can email us at, at, at shcaad and, we, and with a telephone number and we will call you back and, and go through your situation with you and give you the best advice. Likewise, for employers, if there are any issues, if they want us to come and um, do any outreach sessions, we'll be happy to do so, especially with the sexual um, national workplace policy on sexual harassment. Just write our permanent secretary and uh, Ms. Natalie Willis and um, just inform her that you would like us to come uh, or you would, well, we're doing a lot of webinar series these days. So just write us and tell us what it is you'd like. We have a suite of services that's on our website, um, labor.gov.tt, and you feel free to contact us. We will be very willing and happy to assist you. I think there's one thing that you want people to have in terms of a lasting impression of the division, Ms. Gomez. What would that be? Well, we are very hardworking. I mean, you know, persons are there at all hours, sometimes, you know, even after. We don't work an eight to four job. And I think that's one of the requirements, you know, the job they ask you, can you work long hours? And people are really dedicated. They're young people, but they're really dedicated. When it's time to work, they don't complain. And, um, you know, sometimes seven, eight o'clock, sometimes I'm leaving, I'm taking off the lights and stuff, you know. So I have to tell them to go home. Miss you know? Gomez, <laughs> might you have some of the employees complaining about no, the employers you know, abusing I the know, system no, and no, the division? You see, you know? that is dedication. And you see, sometimes people see, they talk about public servants and all of that, but they don't understand the dedication and the lot of hard work that go into um, making an organization run and be successful. And on that point of hard work and dedication, we want to thank you so much for your dedication and coming back to speak with us, Sabina Gomez, uh, the Chief Labor Relations Officer at the Conciliation Advisory and Advocacy Division. Thank you for joining us on behalf of the entire TTT News team. I'm DK Ronster. This has been In Depth.